Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at Cubase 10.5's track import function. So this has been greatly improved in Cubase 10.5 and if you often use tracks from one project in another, so for instance you kind of remix your own material or you're using them as common themes amongst different projects that you're using for a client or your own use or whatever, this can be really useful. So to start out, as you'd expect, go to File, and then import and then track some project. And then you pick the Cubase project that you want to import the tracks from. So in this case, I've got one set up in this folder. So this is my track import source to make it a lot more clear as what's going on. And then Cubase passes through all those tracks. And as you can see, it's listed all of the tracks which were in that original project. So they were in folders because I'm normally fairly neat, but we can see what kind of tracks they were etc. I'm just going to look at through the options. So obviously you can pick them whether they are in folders or you can pick them individually and so on. So let's say we wanted to import all of the drums and some of the synths which we're going to do for reasons that will become clear a bit later on. So I'm going to import these four which had different uh, VST instruments on them. So you can see PGA, Noisemaker, Model E and no instrument for that one. Now, you may have noticed the destination track. Now, here it's possible to send any imported track to a destination track which is already existing in the project. So if I move this aside, we can see we've got an existing instrument track and an existing audio track. So it's possible, if you wanted to, to decide, oh, that's going to go to this existing instrument. You might want all of the track information from it, but um, just to go into that new track. So all of the parts will get imported into that. So this can be a quick way if you've got complicated edits, etc. Rather than it becoming a pig's ear when you try copy and pasting, etc. You can do this. And obviously here you can do it with multiple tracks. Uh, if it was an audio one, you can see existing audio. And if we had more existing audio tracks, we could pick those. But generally you probably want them to just be new track and then they will be created in the manner you will see in a second. You can pick the kind of events and parts or channel inspector settings and automation. So you can select what's going to be imported. So typically you'll probably want all of these, but sometimes you may not want the automation or channel settings, etc. Got a quick comparison between the two. They are both uh, the same in terms of frames per second and sample rate, etc. and start time. And you can also pick where they're going to be. So let's say you were creating a compilation of different tracks you've already created but you wanted them all in one big project so you could do that relative position or a cursor position so you'd put your cursor where you want and then away you go now importantly here this isn't ticked by default copy to active project folder i would always tick that because then you're going to be working on a copy so unless you're incredibly tight for space and you're importing you know 300 tracks of insane amounts of audio etc normally you'd want them to be separate because this is one of the things that allows your projects to not have a problem so I'm going to tick that so here I'm going to put all these drums and uh, these four acid riff tracks and I'm going to click OK Cubase goes about its business importing those audio tracks etc and there we go so you can see here we have the drums and it's copied not only the tracks but also the coloration from the original project just going to zoom out a bit so you can see that a little more clearly so you can see all those with the audio, etc. And we've also imported these tracks. Um, you can see that this one is set up the correct instrument. Uh, on this Mac, I don't have a lot of instruments on here in case you're wondering why I'm using things like the PG-8 because obviously you wouldn't normally use that. But yeah, it's imported all of those. So importing all those settings, etc. So if you spent ages picking sounds, tweaking presets, and you don't want to export that as a preset, etc., this can be really useful. And obviously this one had no instrument in the source project, so it's got no instrument here. Uh, one thing you may notice when doing this is that if the tempo is different, then you get something like a gap here. So the, the original project, I'm pretty sure the tempo was 140. So if we change the tempo to 140, we'll see that the gaps get closed and all is well. But that's a minor thing to have to deal with. It's really useful to be able to do this. So even if you just want to import you know, the standard drums that you use, so let's say you just set all these things up, you've got some loops you use, this, that, and the other, um, and you've gotten from one project and you want to carry them on to give you a bit of continuity between projects, then just by using this function, 
it can vastly speed up how much time you take because I've I've seen quite a few people in the past, you know, oh, they, I copied this project and then I did this, but I didn't do backup projects. And then when I changed the audio, it then screwed up my original project. So this this is a really clean, uh, easy way to do it. And obviously here you can do it from multiple different projects. So if you want to integrate, you know, the drums from one project and some synth parts from another project, you can bring them together really quickly and easily rather than, say, trying to open up different projects, copying and pasting and so on. This works really cleanly and easily, and it's nice and simple to use. So hopefully that's a feature you're going to find useful. And if you have found this video useful, uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.